This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Well, hello there, and welcome to She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. Thanks so much for joining me today. This is episode 101, and I'm excited to welcome my friend Hannah Lowe Corman onto the show. Last week in episode 99, I chatted with Taylor Bradford about what it took for her to start her wedding rental business. She owns Sugar Creek Vintage Rentals in Texas, and as part of as part of my wedding rental business series, she came on the show to kind of chat about that and. Hannah is my second interview in that Reading Wental Business series. And what I'm excited about with this interview is it's less about, hey guys, listen to all these things that I've done about how to start this business. And it's really more of a chat with a person who's just getting started with this side of her business. As you'll learn, Hannah is actually already an artist. She paints custom art commissions and more, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her in just a second. But she's kind of moving into this wedding part of her business where At the moment, her plan is to rent these beautiful backdrops that she paints on thick paper and on canvas. And we really dig into how that idea came to pass and who she's worked with and where she's been published already with backdrops that she's done and why she's kind of moving into this piece as far as her artistic work is concerned. Now, I'm really excited because she's also offering a discount, especially for She Creates Business listeners. If you head over to her website, hannahlowcorman.com, and use the code SHECREATES, in all capital letters, you will get a percentage off of your order. We chat about that again at the end of the episode. And I love her custom art note cards. If you are in the market for note cards, I'm always sending notes to friends. And I think people love to get stuff in the mail. So I really recommend those or anything because she has just beautiful pieces. So Hannah is an artist and a yoga teacher in New York City. In 2016, Hannah jumped at the chance to follow her artistic passion, quitting her job in investment banking and becoming a full-time painter. That's quite a difference isn't it? She studied art and art history at the Maryland Institute College of Art, the so- so- I don't know how to say this word, the Soborn, and the Art Students League of New York, among others. However, her degrees are actually in finance and in French. Isn't that interesting? So we talk about how she has loved art since she was a child, and even though that's where she studied, she learned finance in French, which is pretty incredible. Taking what she's learned as a lifelong artist and art student, Hannah paints abstract pieces inspired by nature, meditation, and movement. Hannah melds her longtime yoga and meditation practice with her painting practice to draw draw tranquility from her work, both in the final outcomes and in the process of painting. She invites the viewers to connect with their own feelings and meditative states while observing her work, which makes it an amazing piece to have in an office, in a home office, in a corporate setting. Hannah also paints custom commissions for clients' homes and offices, as well as large-scale backdrops for weddings, events, and photo booths, which is what we're chatting about today. Her backdrops have already been featured in My Wedding Magazine, Borrowed in Blue, and The Perfect Palette. So really looking forward to you hearing from Hannah. She's just such a down-to-earth, amazing person. She has such a mind for business, and you can really see where her finance degree uh, plays into all of her past experience and what she's learned, because she's done some pretty incredible things, including working at a not-for-profit wedding dress boutique, which we'll get into in just a second. So don't forget that code she creates all capital letters you can use over there on hannahlowcorman.com for a percentage off of your order. And I love the cards, in case you're wondering. All right, without further ado, let's go to the show. Hannah, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kinsey. Thanks for having me. You know, you're welcome. So you guys, you know, I told you uh, there at the top of the show that Hannah and I, we are, we're good friends. We actually met last year. It's funny, actually, how close we've gotten because we met actually literally as we record this almost one year ago, or maybe just over one year ago at a small mastermind kind of workshop that Raina did in Washington, D.C. area. And uh, I just couldn't leave Hannah alone. So, <laughs> so the feeling is mutual. Yeah, yeah. So I made her be my friend, and um, I, I'm. I was just telling her offline. I'm really looking forward to this chat because we're we're chatting about the. 
the part of Hannah's artistic business that really is geared towards weddings, wedding rentals, and things of that nature as part of this um, rental business series. And I feel like this is going to be a really cool spin on on this series because, of course, most of the folks that I am talking to or have spoken with are renting kind of like those physical furniture products and and decoration products. Um, And so this will be fun. Before we get there, I read the professional bio. Everyone pretty much has a good idea where you're coming from, Hannah, but kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself and and what you do as an artist and and things like that. Yeah, definitely. So I am, uh, I would call myself an abstract painter and I take my inspiration for my art from nature and from uh, my yoga and meditation practice. I'm a yoga teacher um, and have been practicing for quite a while. And also from tying in with that, like the movement that I see and feel in the world, but also then like the movement of my own body as I'm painting. Yeah. Um, I, I like to just kind of visualize and then feel and then paint, if that makes sense. Maybe yeah. that's a little out there. But anyway, um, I've, been, uh, I've been painting my whole life, but it's just been since I think – 2016 ish that I've done it as a business that I've actually been selling art before that I was uh, not for profit fundraising actually in the wedding industry I ran a uh, a wedding dress store where all the dresses were donated we had brides come in ev- like everyone was a volunteer except for me and I ran the shop and then all the proceeds that we raised from selling the dresses went to the cancer support community um, and they offer free services to anybody uh, affected by cancer. So whether you have a diagnosis or a family member, et cetera. So it's kind of funny that, that I'm like back around in the wedding industry a little bit. Um, and before that, I actually was in healthcare, investment banking, and commercial banking. So I've done um, a wide array of jobs, I guess. But my um, my background... My schooling, I guess, is in finance and French, um, but have always had this artistic streak that it wasn't until I moved to New York in 2016 that my eyes were opened to the possibility of of doing it as a as a career and not just as a hobby. It like never crossed my mind until I came to New York and, and saw what people were doing and mm-hmm. was really inspired to just take that leap and see what see what happens. And mm-hmm. here we are. Two years later, still going. Oh, okay. So I, I want to come back to that really quickly. I want to ask you from, you know, your background in finance and all of that, how did you land at the at the boutique dress shop uh, doing that nonprofit work? How did that, I mean, I know like finance industry, like anywhere you work, yeah. like finance, nonprofit, it's all kind of, it's all kind of intertwined, but I'd be interested to know how you landed there. Yeah. So I, like I said, I've been working in healthcare mm-hmm. banking specifically. So all my customers were hospitals, not-for-profit, um, long-term care facilities. And that was in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, my husband and I moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan for his job. And the bank where I was working didn't exist out there. So I, um, as I've kind of done in my life, I picked up a bunch of volunteer activities that spoke to me. And particularly, you know, healthcare is like a passion of mine. So picked up some volunteer opportunities um, and was actually, I actually started as a volunteer in this bridal boutique, raising money for the cancer support community. I found my wedding dress there for $300 and just got so super involved. I volunteered my way into a job. So what do you know? <laughs> like That's just how it happened. Mm-hmm. I know. It's always like, it's it's not what you know, it's who you know, and also kind of the experiences that you have, and then you can end up somewhere you didn't even expect. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you're just really enthusiastic and passionate and let's be honest, competent, right? You sure. know, you bet. good people are are needed. So yeah, so it was, it was a lovely, really cool and different experience you know, getting to work in not-for-profits, but also in a really different niche aspect of fundraising. Did you ever think you'd be back in the wedding industry? No, no. mm -mm. I think, 
more so I would have thought I would be in um, back in healthcare mm -hmm. or starting my own business, but but I'm not sure I would have thought that it would be in the wedding industry. I always kind of had this idea that I wanted to work for myself. Like even when I worked at the bank, I remember I'd always go into my boss's office and be like, oh, there's a, you know, there's a for rent sign downstairs in the retail space. We should open a juice bar. And he was like, Hannah, no, like we're not doing that. Like, but wouldn't it be so cool? Like everyone from this bank would go to the juice bar like every day, wouldn't they? So yeah, I, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas swirling around my brain. Um, that doesn't yeah, surprise no, me. It wasn't necessarily wedding industry related. Yeah. So you mentioned that once you moved to New York in 2016, that's when you your eyes were really open to the possibilities of taking your lifelong passion of being an artist to kind of a, a new level. I guess, what did you, what was it about New York that led you there? I mean, New York is New York, so... Again, yeah. But what was right. it? I mean, were you like going to a lot of galleries or just, you know, were you immersed in the artistic community? Kind of, kind of uh, walk us through that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So back in Ann Arbor, actually, I was part of the Rising Tide Society. And uh, I'm, I assume most of your listeners know what that is. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, running this wedding dress shop, that was like a perfect fit. And so many people, in that group were in the wedding industry, of course. Um, and I made some really, really amazing friends through that. So when I came to New York, I thought to myself, great, Rising Tide Society, that's a perfect place to start meeting people and, you know, making connections and, and diving into this entrepreneurial wor world here in New York. Um, and what surprised me was really the diversity within the rising tide group here in New York, because mm -hmm. they're definitely the wedding folks, but then, um, a lot of people beyond that as well, all over the place. Um, artists, photographers, um, you know, not specifically wedding photographers, lawyers. Um, so, so it was really that experience of, um, seeing other women, my age doing this, mm -hmm. that, made me, I don't know, gave me the epiphany that like that, that is a feasible career path because I always say my parents really encouraged me to pursue art and, um, my mom's very artistic and her mom was a painter, but I really never considered it a career path because let's be honest, you don't really make a, you can make a good living, I guess, doing it, but that's not a given, right? Whereas if you go into finance, chances are you're going to be able to pay your bills at the end of the month. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So it was really more like a practical thing. I, I never, it wasn't like a discouraged thing. It was just not practical, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. Well, it's, I feel like, you know, that's all of us, right? I feel like, especially for a certain age group, like in our thirties, um, that's what it was. It was like, go, you know, do well, go to college, get a job, like definitely have hobbies. I feel like our parents were encouraging and, and do what you want, yes. but also, you know, be an adult, pay your bills and live Support your life. yourself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I really feel, really feel like we're in this, you know, you mentioned you've been doing, doing more artistic or more art professionally since 2016. Um, I feel like my online business kind of cosm happened, you know, in 2010, but I wasn't, I was still working for like an agency at that time and um, didn't start my own business until 2015. And so, you know, I feel like we're in this last couple of like three to five or five, six, seven years. I mean, at least for me, I don't, you know, I know a lot of other people have been like blogging professionally since 2002. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at you, Darren Rouse from Pro, Pro Blogger. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I feel like it's really... I feel like we could have, I've said this on the show before, but, you know, back when we were going to college, not that I went the whole time, but, you know, graduating high school, going to college for whatever amount of time, I don't think we could have ever envisioned this life for ourselves, right? We couldn't have ever, in, um, for a lot of us, there's no way we could have envisioned or even conceptualized these online careers at all. And so I think they were, everything that we've done in the past is just a stepping stone to what we are today. It's not like, you know, I don't, you would have never said it when you were in college and, you know, doing finance, gee, I think I'll move to New York and be an artist. 
Right. No, and, absolutely not. And sell not. stuff online, you know? No, right. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That, but on the other hand, like like you said, everything is a stepping stone. Right. And I'm grateful that I was in corporate America for so long because it afforded me the opportunity to have savings to then pursue this. Yes. You know? And well, if sorry, I had to, if I, no, I was just going to say, like, if I had to, I'm, I'm certainly not at the place now in my art career that I've replaced my income from mm-hmm. banking. Certainly not. You know? Well, and without that career, like, uh, full disclosure, you guys, I probably, I don't, I'm, I mentioned this at the top of the show. Uh, I, maybe I said it already again, but Hannah and I are in a mastermind together. So, I personally know how much knowledge Hannah has rolling around in her brain and it is extensive and vast and it's so pragmatic and it's practical, but it's also, you know, it's like far reaching and imaginative. It's, it's really impressive. I, it's kind of shocking sometimes. I'm like, I don't understand how you can be like so good with spreadsheets, but also so creative. (laughs) It's, It's so impressive. And so I, but you know, you really honed that over the years. Like we just said, you know, those stepping stones and in finance, there's no way you could have gotten all of that different experience without having that, without having those, those jobs and those experiences. And uh, I think that it kind of like ties you up in this great bow and makes you who you Aww. are in your business, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay. Let's talk about art. So yes. let's talk about, I, and I don't, I am excited about this part of your business. I don't know a lot about it. We both said we're excited about this episode because we're kind of both exploring <laughs> what this is for Hannah and what it looks like and what it could look like. So tell us how you're selling art right now. And then let's kind of venture into how you are, want to have been in like getting into the rental game when it comes to the wedding industry. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So right now I am selling my art on my website, mm-hmm. hannahlocorman.com. And I paint a few collections a year that are just my own inspiration that come to me in the middle of the night or whatever when I'm meditating. And then I also take on commission paintings where, you know, someone approaches me and says, this is the size, this is the color, or here's a, a trip I took and I really want something that captures the mood of that. And, um, and so working one-on-one with clients to paint something specific for their home. And then in addition to all that, I've been doing these large-scale paintings for backdrops, yes. for weddings. So whether that's you know behind the ceremony or the chuppah or the escort card table or the cake table or wherever, the photo booth. Um, these are also like large abstract works in your color scheme that would be like a show stopping piece for the wedding. And I started down this path actually also because of the rising tide society. Um, a photographer was putting together a very small styled shoot and she just put out a call in our Facebook group for vendors to join her. And I said, well, would you want to do a painted backdrop for your style shoot? And she said, yes, that's fabulous. So it was literally just her as the photographer, her sister as the model, um, a stationer and myself. And we got together in a breather room. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's like, what is that? It's like, um, like a co-working space, but you sign up for breather and, you pay by the hour and they give you a code to unlock the door essentially. And they have different size rooms and they're like all over the city. So that is so cool. Yeah. It's kind of cool. You can just be wherever you are and like pop on and, and say, Oh, I just need to, you know, have a, have a room to rent with a table and a couch and a TV or whatever. So she rented out a room for a few hours and we put together this styled shoot and it just looked so so beautiful. I mean, it was her sister modeling a wedding dress. And so the majority of the photos that had my backdrop in it were um, the model in the dress, either sitting or standing with her bouquet and some close ups and some faraway shots. And it really tied the whole thing together because a lot of the um, styling was very soft and simple kind of grays um, and light 
greens. And then I painted this kind of light green and teal and gold and pink backdrop. But the majority of it was, was green. And it was kind of, it, I paint in acrylics. But it's funny because everybody thinks I paint in watercolors. I think just the wa- I do use water with my acrylics and I use a lot of white, which gives it that uh, kind of watery look to it. Mm-hmm. So um, it's funny. She actually, when she was blogging about it and writing about it afterwards, she, was, she said something like watercolor inspired backdrop or I don't know, something like that. It was Oh, so she even thought it was watercolor. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it was funny. But um, yeah, it was just, it was was really nice. And I was like, this is so, it was so fun to do something so large. And as you can imagine, in a tiny New York City apartment, that's not an easy accomplishment. I I bought like a really large roll of paper and I rolled out as much as I could on the floor in the living room, painted it as fast as I could, waited for it to dry and then kind of rolled up the painted edge and then unrolled more and then, you know, made sure that the transition worked and then like kept going. So it was, um, it was really fun. It was hard to, it was hard for me to capture on, take a picture of it in all one, in all one piece in my space, you know? So it was nice that she, um, was able to get some good photos of it. Well, and I thought Style Chew was published somewhere, wasn't it? That one. Um, Where is that backdrop? That, I know I've seen it. That backdrop, you know, she published it. I think she did it like kind of all over her own stuff and all over Instagram and something. I don't think that that one was actually published, but it's kind of funny because then it kind of led me into um, – a second style shoot, which was published okay, in my wedding that's right. magazine. That's right, yeah. my wedding magazine. Okay, yeah, I knew, yeah. I knew you're. I was, I wanted to say magazine, but I was like, oh crap, maybe that wasn't it. But I knew that yeah. it was something. It was big. Yeah, that's a big was, deal. It was, it was amazing, and it was so cool because, again, in the Rising Tide Society, I it was t- early 2017, and we were talking about goals and, you know, what we wanted to accomplish for the year. Yeah, and it was so scary to put it out there, but I wrote in the group, I said, this year I want to be published in print, in a magazine. Um, You know, blogs are all great and nice, but something about like seeing it on a piece of paper in a hard copy at Barnes and Noble is pretty cool. It's pretty, wow. Yes. Exciting. Yes. Um, So I put it out in the group and a wedding planner came back to me and she said, I actually am she had already been working with my wedding magazine to create a styled shoot. And this was a um, pop art Andy Warhol ish inspired um, styling. Mm -hmm. So I did a backdrop for her for behind the favor and dessert table. And it was multicolored. And then it had like 3d florals that kind of stood up out away from the 2d painting. Yes. yeah, so that was um, that was re- again really fun to create something really large and then do something kind of funky. I feel like with each subsequent backdrop, uh, it's always a, a little bit different. Like pushing, trying new things, and and it was really fun. And then um, subsequent to that, I think also through Rising Tide. See everything, you know. There's something to be said for you know. N- online networking but also in-person networking and and meeting people in real life I agree so much yeah you just have a a deeper connection you know like you actually know people um I was part of another style shoot that was published on uh, borrowed and blue and um my perfect palette is that what it's called I wrote it in I wrote it in my bio I think that's what it's called um yeah I think so Yeah. And that was, uh, it was such a cool experience. There's an Island here off of Manhattan called governor's Island and it's only open. It's an, um, it's only open in the summer, like spring, summer, fall. And I believe it's like half owned by the city and half owned by national park services. Um, 
And the wedding planner who was putting it together, her friend actually works there. So he was able to get us over there in the off season. So we were like the only people on the island. Whoa. It's a pretty big island. But it was so cool that it used to have a um, – like a fort, I think, and a jail, I don't know, something like that, all these historic buildings. And so we did the styled shoot in like a, an old an old jail, I want to say, or old fort. Yeah, I think it was a fort, like down underground. It was very moody, and um, I did this jewel-toned backdrop that, ha- that hung behind the, you know, the, cer- the quote-unquote ceremony. Um, and that wedding planner was super cool. She she strongly suggested that I try some gold foil or gold leaf. And mm-hmm. that was the first time I had actually played around with that. And I thought it turned out so well. And now I just like incorporate that in a lot of my other paintings on canvas and on wood. And so I'm so appreciative that she, you know, urged me to do that and, and pushed my envelope a little bit more. And I love that about collaborating with people, you know, they like push you to, to do things you haven't done before. And usually it turns out, you know, pretty cool. You learn something new at least. I, it does. It, wow. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think that sometimes we get, we get so mired down in doing the work, you know, or we get so, um, what's the word I'm trying to think we get so attached in our business, we get kind of mired down. And there's a great saying out there. It's basically like working in your business and on your business or whatever it is. Right, right, right. Kind of is is very similar to the situation. We all do it. We are so into like our systems and our processes. And we we forget that there's other avenues out there and it really takes that person to come in who is just on the periphery who can see things that we can't see to give us the push we need and I think it's you have these beautiful you had you did this the last collection I think last year uh the really beautiful pink collection that had gold in it yes yep Mm -hmm. like if it wasn't for her it wouldn't you know wouldn't have done that yep totally a hundred percent and that was such a beautiful collection yeah Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, so um, so in the course of these styled shoots, I've created some other really large pieces um, for backdrops, and and you know maybe you can help me brainstorm. Actually, I I keep using the word backdrop, and I feel like that is something people um, understand. But I was thinking about it, and I think there's got to be other words out there, and and. I need a thesaurus, I guess, because I'm, I'm wondering, you know, this is not something that I see a lot of in, um, in like wedding scapes or on Pinterest. You know, you see a lot of, um, those flower walls, you see a lot of, um, kind of rustic wood, what backdrops, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, or like curt, um, not curtains, but like drapes with lights and, that sort of thing. So, right. but I, I don't know about you, but I really haven't seen a whole lot of original art as wedding decor. Um, yeah, I definitely haven't seen a lot of original art. What I am seeing more now, uh, and I think that this, I feel like this has been happening for a while, but you know, hand letters, calligraphers, I feel yes. like they're doing a lot of um, backdrops. Uh, I'm going to call them a backdrop too. Scrolls, yeah. what what have you, and yes. in their hand lettering and in their calligraphy. But no, I certainly have not seen a lot of original art. Like I'm thinking of a scroll I actually have in my office right now for a style shoot. It's mm. it's a scroll. We it's it's available for purchase or at least that. But it's a hand letter. It's not original art. So it's gorgeous and it's gold hand lettering and it's a quote from Pride and Prejudice. Um, but it's a big like scroll backdrop yes but, uh, yes, yes anyway so yeah very fascinating but yeah I just call it a backdrop a scroll I don't know you guys if there's something more professional to say let us know yeah tell us I mean I need to know all the words yeah yeah <laughs> I need to know uh, like the uh, you know how, how people are searching for this or how people are describing this so anyway yeah so I am um, so kind of like the scroll that you're talking about I personally I feel like my recommendation to people out there would be to purchase something like this Mm -hmm. because 
then it's unique to you, right? We're going to work together to make it absolutely spectacular for your wedding and your colors and your design. And then you get to take it home at the end of the day. And whether you're living in, um, you know, a place with a huge living room that you have the capacity to hang something like this, or if you wanted to cut it, you know, it's yours now, do whatever you want with it, cut it down and frame it and create a memory, but also unique art piece for above your couch or cut it up really small and make thank you notes out of it. Or, you know, if you're DIY kind of person, there's so much that could be done. But since this, you know, is all about rentals, that is also an option. Um, Frankly, my pricing for rentals versus buying it outright is not that much cheaper because everything is kind of delicate and I'm not, I don't anticipate getting it back in pristine condition, right? So. Yeah, I don't, I don't even see how you could, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think. Sorry. Oh, I was going to ask, do you paint on paper or do you paint on fabric for these? Um, paint on either like a heavy paper Uh or on a roll of canvas. On a roll of canvas. Okay. Yeah. Which would be a little bit heavier too in terms of trying to hang it logistically. Right. But it would probably be easier. Is it easier to roll or not after the paint applied? They're both pretty easy to roll, I'd say. But yeah, obviously a canvas is going to have less wear and tear overall than than paper. Than paper. Um, So for the rental model – Every basically when I get the backdrops back, I'm going to inspect them and the subsequent rental pricing goes down, right? Because it's not as pristine as it once was. Um, If it's even feasible to re-rent it, you know, maybe it's a matter of having to cut um, a nine by five down to something much smaller and sell it as as a painting. So Mm. who knows? Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting because I've also seen, um, you know, I've seen rental contracts where the, the person renting the items is responsible for any wear and tear or damage. But I feel like that's really, um, that would be like an undue burden for me to put on somebody to try and Like, I don't need to add stress to people's wedding day, right? Like, trying to keep something looking in pristine condition. Like, they should be able to enjoy it and use it as they see fit. And, like, I will take it back and then do as I see fit with it. Yeah. I agree with you on that, especially in this particular, especially with these particular rentals. You know, I feel feel as if when – if you're renting a love seat or chairs – you should probably be able to like keep those dice for a good six hours. You know what I mean? Unless you're <laughs> right. getting completely crazy. Uh, in which case, you should be responsible for that. That's just that's just my opinion. But when it comes to something yeah. like a backdrop that is in fact paper, I mean, anything yeah. could happen. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, even Definitely. just in the in the hanging of the backdrop, I'm trying to think. I'm thinking through that a little bit. I really like where your head is at on that. Where it's yeah. it's. I don't know. I guess I would have different feelings if it was canvas. Because to, to me, canvas is is tougher. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know if that's true. true. <laughs> no, it is. It is. It is. I don't know anything about art, you guys. But <laughs> I feel like in, in the case of a canvas backdrop, when it comes to renting a canvas backdrop, there could be more stipulations around the condition that it's returned in because it is a lot sturdier. But with paper, gosh, I don't even know if I would rent those, to be honest with you. I would just sell those. Well, and like I said, my, my pricing basically um, – like a purchase price Mm -hmm. for a custom would be $1,500. And you can see on my website, I have backdrops that I've already done for purchase for Mm $1,250. So that's, you know, basically one, one usage. Yes. And then the rental on something custom would be 1300 and the rental on something pre-made would be a thousand. So the differential is like not so great that, I'm I, like you said. I'm kind of encouraging people to to purchase rather than deal with the hassle of of renting and returning. But if that's you know if someone's trying to save two hundred two hundred fifty dollars, okay, fine. Like, yeah, it's totally send it doable. back. I'll take it back, and and we'll go. I'll I'll deal with it on my end. I'll go from there. Um, 
you know, but my, my business model has to be such that like I make my, my money back on the first rental, right? Yes. On, the, on the purchase or first rental of that item. Absolutely. Well, and your work is your work. It's again, it's, it's quite different than renting, you know, unless you have had something, if, unless you've had a piece of furniture reupholstered or, or what have mm-hmm. you, of course, there's always an initial investment in that piece of furniture or that piece of decor. But when it comes to your art, your, your work is your work. And, and regardless of whether it's a pre-done piece or not, it's original to you. And whereas, you know, if you rent these 26 mismatched goblets for your cute farm table, you know, that's going to be in every other wedding too. So it's, you have to be compensated for your work right away, if that makes sense, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Which mm-hmm. you totally, you you get that and you agree with that. But it's yeah. uh, like you had to actually physically sit down and paint that. You know what I yeah. mean? So Well, really more like stand and squat and like <laughs> run back and forth. That's true. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, I forgot. Like New York apartment, it's actually more like a workout in calisthenics and then also painting. <laughs> oh my God, it really is. It really is. I have to wear like a workout gear, like a tank top and, you know. I was wondering. Tiptoe around like between like the painting and the wall and like oh get really thin. <laughs> Well, that's it. Everybody have to go because I have to go move to New York and become a painter so that I can look like <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> so see you later. Great podcast. Just so yes, I should start actually forget oh this rental business. I'm just going to start a workout called painting. Seriously, <laughs> people would do that. You know, they would. You know that that okay, I'm sorry, but if drinking wine and painting flower pictures has become a thing like that would definitely be a thing. Yeah, work, work out and paint. Yeah, Love it. you're in prime location to New York. Yes. <laughs> it's like the perfect breeding ground for those uh what what's That's, the word eccentric yes 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 <laughs> um non-essential non-essential oh hilarious okay we'll have to talk about that because that's funny yes. uh not yeah anything not i see a business plan on the horizon i do oh gosh we need to stop that um so tell me where what are you looking forward to with this part of your business you know you've been it's it's not different than really what you've been doing you do custom pieces all the time you do commissions but it's just a different industry it's a different style certainly the rental piece is different than what you've done how are what are you looking forward to kind of this year and into the future where do you see this going for uh hannah low corman yeah i'm just excited about this possibility because Mm -hmm. I, I really feel like I, in all these lists and and Pinterest and everything, you see a lot of, um, beautiful, beautiful backdrops. But like I was saying earlier, I just haven't seen so much in terms of, um, original art backdrops. Mm -hmm. And I know that, um, you know, it could be, it could be a thing. It could be a thing that people, um, could really cherish because yes, a drape, Draping with lights looks beautiful, but like then that you take it down and that's it. But like this, you can take it home with you. It's yours. And um, I just, I'm really excited about working with people to create something that's unique and personal to them. And um, so I've, I've dubbed 2018 my year of commissions. And my goal is to do two commission paintings a month, um, which also selfishly fits really nicely with my um, stay at home mom nap schedule um not selfish at all perfect but yeah but of those so of those 24 commissions um which could be anything sky's the limit um it'd be really fantastic if a handful were you know these large scale items for for weddings and whether they were rentals or purchase but um i'm yeah i'm really it's like i liked so much working with brides to find their wedding dresses and just the joy of the hunt, right? Like doing like the joy of organizing and pulling things together and, um, making, making the whole lead up to the wedding a celebration rather than just the day, right? Because everything is fun and everything is, is joyful and happy. It should be. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it's really infectious to work with brides and their families. And if I can get back to that a little bit in this one aspect of my business, that would be so much fun. And brides, grooms, couples, whomever, um, you know, whoever's making this decision. Yes. But yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to. 
Uh, I I cannot wait. I I definitely want to dig into this more, which we will. Obviously, we talk every week. Um, I I'm so excited about this part of your business too, and I love what you just said that everything leading up to the wedding should be a celebration too, and not just the day of. That was that was you're so right because it is fun. And what's fun about what's you made such a good connection between finding your dress and really finding something that is so because you know why the dress is so fun is because it's so personal. Mm-hmm. It's such a yeah. personalized decision or the suit, whatever it is, whatever you're wearing on the on your wedding day, it doesn't have to be a dress, uh, whatever you choose to put on your body on the day of your wedding is so important and so personal. And that's what your custom art is. It's personal. It's important. And it's something that will be in all of the pictures. It really is that same big decision that is just thrilling to make. Yes, yes. And I also really loved working with brides and and having their eyes open as to the possibilities, right? Because we were working with secondhand dresses. So if they tried on a dress that wasn't you know, exactly what they had had in mind walking Mm -hmm. into the store, but showing them all the possibilities and potential for this dress and how you could change it and make it your own and do all these things. It's kind of the same with this, with this backdrop, with this painting. It's okay. Here's a legitimately a blank canvas. What can we create for you? Like here are all the possibilities. It's really endless. Mm. So yeah. Yay. Okay. We're going to have to do a follow up. We should do a yeah. follow up since this is the year of commission. We've talked about it. We should do a follow up towards the end of 2018 to say, okay, this was the year of commission. Here's what we talked about in February. What happened? How did it go? Yeah. yeah. What happened? What was well, what was it like? Well, let's it hope it goes well life? then. It is going to go well. <laughs> this is real life. Yeah, this podcast is real life. So we right? it's, it's going to go well. And if it doesn't, it, there'll be lots of lessons in between. So yes, we can round up and we can be like, well, that was not what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. I don't think that's what it's going to be. But I, yeah, I would love that. I'm always intrigued by the where are they now episodes. I feel like not a yes. lot of podcasters do that. Yes. Good idea. Cool. Good idea. Love it. Hannah, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I, I, you know, I love talking to you. We talk all Ditto. the time. Uh, I I, she can't get rid of me. And I appreciate <laughs> you so much coming on and sharing about your business. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, and um, remember. Oh my gosh. Tell. Yeah. yeah. You guys. Um, okay. Hannah, go. I told Kinsey that I have created a coupon code on my website, <laughs> hannahlocorman.com. The coupon code is she creates all capital letters, and that is going to be for 10% off any order of $75 or more. So that go use that. Yes. I appreciate that so much. So yes, yeah, she creates all capital letters. And I'm not telling you what to buy over there, but if you do <laughs> want to buy her custom uh, thank you. No, they're not, they're blank. Her custom note cards. I'd be fine with that. Um, they are so beautiful. We all love them. And of course, everything else, but, uh, she creates all capital letters that's in the show notes, you guys. So, uh, if you need to just scroll up a little bit and then pop the link in your browser, if you just click it, it'll open a new window from this podcast. Other than that, where else can they find you online, Hannah? I would say the best place to find me these days is on Instagram Mm -hmm. at Hannah Low Corman. Um, I have a Facebook page, but as we were kind of discussing, I think, was it, I don't remember where we were discussing it. It's, it's there to, to be there, but Instagram is really where I'm, where I'm present most of the time. I'll put it that way. There you go. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.